Welcome to episode 164 of Claridad Comprimido. Okay, I just thought I would show off my Spanish skills. It's Clarity Compressed. My name is Paul J. Daly. I will be your host. And today we're going to talk about what's the better way to be? Is it like head up or head down? We're making our way through the fog of life and clarity is understanding where we are on the map. You are here. (laughs) Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. Anyone who has been in a leadership position, and I don't mean this is limited to people in business or commerce or some organization, because you can be in a leadership role in a lot of different areas of your life. And by far, it is not just in business. It's in your family. It's in your community. It's, uh, it could even be why you're in a fast food restaurant. You could be in leadership depending on how you act. So here's the difference, or not the difference, but here's the point of what I want to talk about today. Head up versus head down. And what I mean by that is head up is you're looking out. You're looking into the future. You're evaluating all the circumstances around you. And some people are wired to be that way, always looking down over the horizon. Observe, 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 pay attention. The other side of that coin is head down. And when I say head down, I mean your hands are in the dirt, right? You're working, you're looking at what's right in front of you so that you can, you know, dig into it, put it together, get things done, check the boxes, you know, have a to-do list and get it all done. So which one's better? Because we all have a natural inclination to do one or the other. It's funny, this, this really plays out in the way my wife and I drive. When I drive, I always have my head out. I'm looking forward. I never look down. When my wife drives, she tends to focus on what's in front of the car more. So sometimes I'll actually run things over because I'm not looking right at the ground. So I might hit you know, something in the road that's a little bit smaller, but I'm looking for the big things. I'm looking at brake lights four cars ahead of me to see if I see those brake lights, I know I have to cover my brake. Head up is not better than head down or vice versa. The real point is understanding how to blend both of them. How to understand, because if we all just lived with our head up, looking around, looking up, looking in the clouds, if we all lived like that, we would end up being really disconnected from what was going on in the moment, in the real time. And a lot of the times visionaries and people like that can become very detached from reality. And if you have a family, if you're always looking down the line to, oh, when my kids are this age or when we're retired or when we get in that other house, if you're constantly looking at that, you guess what? Before you know it, your kids are gone and you missed it. You missed the nuance. On the flip side, if you're the kind of person that is much more inclined to look down, constantly be looking at the task at hand and just working, 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 say, I'm just going to take care of the next thing as it comes to me. Well, that's admirable, but you know what else you're at risk of is not seeing the danger that's on its way, not seeing the cultural change that's on its way, not having any time to adjust or adapt or prepare for it because your head's down, you're checking boxes, but something's coming down the pike That's about to blow your world up. And so we only have so many hours in a day. We only have so many years in a life. So which one do we pick? Head up or head down? I think you know where I'm going with this already. The reality is that we have to pick both. And we have to find a blend of both that works for us. And we have to understand that naturally speaking, we are going to be more inclined to have our head up or have our head down. And that's really the first step of finding good good balance there is saying, okay, what do I most likely or most easily gravitate toward? Keeping my head down or keeping my head up? And once you recognize that thing, I'm head up or head down, now the next step is to like ask yourself the question, right? What is it that I am missing because I am not keeping my head up or head down, right? Whatever one's the opposite of what you naturally do. You have to ask yourself, what might I be missing? 
If you're in a professional situation, if you're in a work, if you're a leader, an entrepreneur, a manager, somebody in your business, well, if you have your head up all the time, you're going to miss the mechanics of your business. You're going to mix, miss the fixed operation functionality that actually makes a business profitable, that actually makes a business cohesive and able to generate something on repeat, able to generate something of value to bring to the market because you're always looking over the horizon. Look, I'm going to be honest. That's, that's what I struggle with. I like to look over the horizon. I like to see what's going to come next. You know, the, the shiny new thing is a real thing for me. And trying not to let my excitement and exuberance for that overcome my ability to execute and focus on the here and now. Look, I got a, uh, my EA Danielle bought me this birthday card and it, it kind of sums it up. It says happy. It has a, if you're just listening to the podcast, it says the top, it's three, it's a, a card that's divided into like three quadrants, top to bottom. First one says happy. It's a dog. The second one says squirrel. And then the bottom one says birthday. And that's kind of indicative of my personality. So I tend to want to look over the horizon, but what happens is that details get missed and details get dropped. And then in business, like, right, that connects to people and people's emotions and their thoughts and their feelings. So I need, it's really important for me to make myself hedge against that capability and spend time. And I do that through structure, through scheduling, through my assistant, Danielle, through our COO, Robin, who is detail oriented. You have to, you have to, it has to be a good counterpoint, you know, and, but I also, if you're in business and you're so detail oriented, you'd like being in the work, what's going to happen is you're going to become irrelevant because there's a Titanic something coming up the pike that's about to steamroll your business and you never saw it coming because your head was down. And so the first thing I just said, number one, you have to ask yourself, what are you more, uh, what's your proclivity? What are you more likely to be? Head up in the clouds over the horizon or head down in the dirt in the work? Answer that question, good. The next question is, what am I missing because that's my natural proclivity? Make sense? Pretty simple. And once you ask these things, that like, I want this to lead to some level of action and meaningful change or else we're all just wasting our time here together, right? I'm not that entertaining. So third thing, I just said, it, I gave it away. Third thing is, what am I going to do to change that? What's my natural proclivity? Head up, head down. What am I missing as a result of that? And what am I going to do about it? Three things that I hope if you can push those down and even just going through the mental exercise right now of doing it, I think could actually lead to some incremental meaningful change in your life. Or if you want to really lean in and this is hitting home and you're realizing like you're walking the dog right now or you're driving to work or you're doing whatever and you're like, holy crap, I am. I'm vulnerable because I'm not looking up enough or I'm vulnerable because I got my head down. If your head is up, you need to make sure that you're functionally able to, to craft the new way to do it. But if your head is down and you're just working, 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 you are going to miss this change in transition and you will be out of business soon enough. Take it out of the professional world if we're looking at our families and things like that. If you have kids, guess what? If your head's up all the time, you might miss the sweet parts of life. But if your head's down and you're just worried about getting the kids fed and getting them to lunch, when are we going to do this? Guess what? You might miss the dreaming and the fun that comes with looking at the future of your family and looking at the next steps and planning for the next steps of not only your kids' lives as they grow up and move out, but you know, your relationship, your marriage, right? What is that going to look like when the kids are gone? And what is what do we want retirement to be? So I hope that that little shot of perspective and that little shot of clarity on claridad comprimido, that's clarity compressed in Spanish. I hope that helps you think a little bit more clearly about where you are in life and where you want to head. That's the whole point of this show is to help get you there. Understand where you are in the map so that you can get and orient yourself to where you want to go. I hope you have an amazing week. Thank you so much for spending some time with me here today. I hope you'll join the email list. If you don't know there's an email list, there is. If you go to claritycompressed.com and sign up, uh, right now it's, it's a, a few words to accompany the podcast every week when we launch it, but I'm going to be building that out a, a little bit more. I hope you have an amazing week. I hope you have an amazing day. And I hope you have a little more clarity than when you started listening to this show. I will see you next time. We came to fight.